Hello. Welcome to Mentoring with the Masters. My name is Jennifer Kirkendall. I'm the Third Circuit Representative for the Young Lawyers Division Board of Governors. Today I have the pleasure of visiting with Michael Cohen, the Executive Director of the Florida Lawyers Assistance Program. Welcome. Thank you for being here and joining us today. Thank you for having me. First of all, can you just tell us what is it? What do you do? Florida Lawyers Assistance is the program that was created at the mandate of the Florida Supreme Court in 1986. Um, the court became aware through a uh, committee of the Florida Bar and some education that we did of the, the higher than average statistics of lawyers dealing with substance abuse, with stress, with depression, with other mental health issues. So the court directed the bar to either create or fund a program to help lawyers, law students, and judges dealing with those situations. Um, we argued at the time that the bar should fund the program, but it and not be part of the bar in order to maintain confidentiality and, and anonymity. And the court and the bar accepted that. So FLA was formed as a separate nonprofit corporation in 1986, and the mission is to help lawyers, judges, and law students dealing with mental health and substance abuse and now aging conditions. All right. Well, that's something that it's it's a resource that's out there, but how do they actually find you and reach out to you? There are a number of ways. There's a link on the Florida Bar website to our webpage. There is a toll-free number that is 800-282-8981. Um, the email link is given on the website. So there are a number of ways. And then there are volunteers all over the state. There are about 200 volunteers who are lawyers, judges, medical providers who have a lot of times dealt with their own experiences and want to give back uh, so they can access those individuals. There are 30 weekly groups around the state, um, both on the mental health and substance abuse side that are free, that are completely confidential for lawyers that are either in recovery or want to get into recovery or want some additional support uh, in addition to other programs that they may be going to. All right, what is the actual process? A lawyer, let's say a substance abuse problem, they call in, where does it go? They're usually referred to a local contact in their area, um, one of our volunteers, or they're given the time and place of the local attorney support meeting um, where they can meet other individuals. If they are dealing with a problem that may require formal treatment, then we can help them find a treatment program that's good working with lawyers. We are not the easiest patients to deal with. Um, very often our training gets in the way of, of treatment. You know, um, my skill is to argue and convince you of something. So. If I want to argue and convince you that I don't have a problem with substance abuse, I'm usually going to be pretty effective. So it, it takes a somewhat specialized treatment program to work with attorneys. What would you say is the number one stressor, if there is a number one, that you're seeing as a, a common thread? There's really two. Obviously, because of the economic situation we've gone through for the last five years, uh, there are a number of young lawyers that are dealing with um, employment situations, not being able to find jobs. And, and then the corollary to that is, is um, financial issues, um, you know, student loan debts. And the number of lawyers that, um, that they have to deal with. Um, you probably, I'm sure you know, we hit 100,000 lawyers in Florida last year. That's up from, I think, somewhere around 12,000 40 years ago. So, you know, you have that many more lawyers competing for business. Probably not things or good things are going to happen. Um, you know, we see lawyers dealing with much more stress because of the competition. We see lawyers making promises they can't keep to get clients, um, doing things and cutting corners that they shouldn't cut to try and keep clients. Um, 
So a lot of times the misconduct we see is not the result of being a bad lawyer or a dishonest lawyer or a negligent lawyer. You know, very often it's, it's a result of stress or substance abuse or depression that is resulting in, in misconduct Certainly. and bad behavior. Well, and you bring up misconduct. Um, is there any correlation with the grievance process? Are, are lawyers referred to you yes. through the grievance process as well? Can you talk on that a little bit? Yeah, the good news is Florida, the Florida bar is one of the most progressive bars in the country when it comes to understanding that there is a connection between these underlying disorders and misconduct. Um, there are estimates that maybe a majority of disciplinary cases have some connection to an underlying mental health or substance abuse issue. And the Florida Bar is very good about recognizing that and saying that you know, if you're willing to acknowledge that this is part of the problem and you're willing to do something about it, then we're willing to work with you to allow you to continue practice. So we get a, a large number of our clients referred to us by the Florida Bar and by the Board of Bar Examiners when applicants disclose a history of treatment or arrest or substance abuse uh, and, and we'll set up a monitoring program um, that will usually call for meeting attendance at one of our meetings and maybe a AA or an NA meeting weekly, random urinalysis testing, having another attorney act as a, mon a monitor or a mentor to them. And as long as they're willing to comply with those conditions, very often the Florida Bar will allow them to continue practice on a probationary basis rather than suspending them or, or something more serious. So the, the bar in this state, I'm very proud to you know, work with the, the Florida bar. Is there anything else you would like to add as far as a takeaway? Um, certainly, don't go it alone, I would think. And, and that, that there is support out there. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, uh, it always astounds me when I do CLE presentations or luncheon presentations or judicial conference, and I say, how many of you are familiar with Florida Lawyers Assistance, and maybe a third of the room, you know, will raise their hand, maybe, you know, if I'm lucky. And, you know, we've been out there for almost 30 years. So, you know, support is available. It's free. It's confidential. It is lawyers helping lawyers to the best degree possible. Um, it's an organization that I'm very proud to, to head, and, and I think we've done a lot of good. But I think we could do a lot more if people knew that we existed. Certainly. Um, so we'll, as the YLD, get the word out there as well. And thank you on behalf of the YLD, not only for being here, but for the work that you do and very um, helpful and beneficial to those in need. No, I really appreciate the time to get the word out. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. And do check back. Um, certainly all the information for the various websites and phone numbers will be available through this video. And please, if you are experiencing any problems whatsoever, you're not alone, and you can certainly reach out, um, such as Michael has talked to us here today. Thank you for joining us.